Um, hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, uh, wherever you are. Uh, welcome to today's um, webinar. Uh, so we continue with the uh, Honor Series webinar. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, and my name is uh, Bill Hakimundiu, um, part of the uh, project manage uh, managers team uh, within the Honor team. Um, so uh, I will just uh, jump right in um, and my colleagues are going to be available to respond to any questions that you may have. So please feel free to post them on the chat um, and the question, your questions will be responded to. Uh, let me know if at any one point, maybe if you cannot hear me or um, uh, if maybe I'm not, um, if I'm not audible, if, if you cannot see my screen, uh, just let my colleagues know and they will alert me uh, to that. Cool, so let's jump right in. So in keeping with our um, uh, mission uh, for Honor, that is to ensure equitable access to services for those who need them most, uh, we are taking you through this webinar where we will uh, continue with the XLS form authoring cafe. Uh, and in focus today is preloading data uh, in XLS forms. So um, what we hope to achieve by the end of today's uh, session is that you will understand what preloaded data is, you will understand when to use preloaded data and how to use preloaded data. Um, and to show you how preloaded data works, we are going to focus on four um, preloading options or methods, and that is external select, select one or multiple from file, the search and the pull data functions. Uh, and just like with every other um, form authoring, um, you there are things that you do need to remember whenever you are authoring your forms. And one of these things is to make sure to test your form often. So do not wait until you have created your entire form and then you begin testing it. So it's important for you to test it incrementally so that you, it will be easy for you to find out where errors are um, and yeah, wh whenever you're uploading your form into Honor, it'll be easy for you to find out where errors are if you find out, uh, if you get an error when you're uploading the form to Honor. Then um, when you're authoring XLS forms, there is a syntax that you do need to uh, adhere to. Um, and this syntax one touches on the question, the question types, the column headers, and also the, um, the names of the sheets, the worksheets. So these, there are predefined names and all of them are in lowercase. So it's important for you to keep that in mind whenever you are designing your forms, whenever you're authoring your forms, so that you follow that particular syntax. Um, like for example, on the survey, on the survey worksheet, you need to make sure that the survey is in is a small letter S. It's all in lowercase. Um, and do not leave it as sheet one or survey two, for example, or surveys in plural. Then the other thing you also need to remember is the field names. The field names have to, uh, should be of a certain length, so not exceeding 30 characters. And then we also recommend that you follow a particular naming convention whenever you are naming your, field, your fields. So the first one that we actually recommend a lot is the snake case, which uses the underscore as a delimiter. So as you can see in this example, I'm showing field name as two um, words separated by an underscore. There are other options. So we have the camel case uh, that uses a capital letter as a delimiter. So given the same example, field name would have capital N, but without any space. Um, Pascal case is this almost the same, is similar, but now with this one, it capitalizes every first letter of, of the word. So in this case, we have F and N um, capitalized. And um, definitely reference xlsform.org uh, if you're a new, if you're learning to build XLS forms, if you also uh, have experience in, 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 build, in authoring XLS forms, it will really help you. Um, to know how to go about these things. Then um, lastly on this item, we did do, uh, recently we did a webinar uh, on authoring, uh, XLS form authoring tips and tricks. Um, so I would recommend that you check it out um, because it will really help you in um, making sure that your XLS form uh, authoring experience is easier and error-free. Uh, please check out our YouTube channel. We're going to share these details as resources at the end once we are done with the webinar. You can also access our blog um, to check out this particular webinar. Um, now let's jump right back into now uh, today's topic, which is preloaded data. So the definition of preloaded data would be 
um, data that you are adding to your XLS form, either from a CSV file or from um, a, a form that is within ONA. So the main thing here is that this is previously collected uh, previously uh, collected data. It could be that you collected data on another tool and then you have the file as a CSV. So you could upload that into ONA with the form and be able to reference that data. Or you could have collected the data with an ONA form um, previously, and now you've created this form that needs to reference either fields or need to, needs to pull lists from that previous form. So that's what we are going to be looking into um, into today. Um, then why is it important for you to use uh, preloaded data? Why are we recommending this option? Um, one of the main things uh, that you will notice is when you have very long location lists, um, when you open that form in, in maybe Enketo or ODK Collect, uh, and all these choices are added to um, the choices worksheet, the form tends to be very slow in loading. And therefore we give this as a recommendation for you to um, use uh, external files or CSV files that will be referenced within the XLS form to ensure that your form is able to load a lot faster. Um, so this mostly affects location lists because they can go into like uh, thousands and ten thousands. Um, so it's just something for you to consider uh, whenever you are doing your, your um, form authoring. Then also, if you have done a previous data collection and you want to reference certain fields in the previously collected data, either for comparison or to make your um, 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 analysis a lot easier, you can also use one of the methods that we will show you that I will go over with you uh, in this session to pull information from a previously from a previous uh, data collection form and add it to the current form so that um, you can compare. Uh, I will give an example that we will look at later where you have maybe a needs assessment and you have a baseline form. So the needs assessment collects the data first. And then later on, when you're doing the baseline, you want to compare and see what the respondent, uh, the information that the respondent gave um, previously, uh, the first time. Um, and so so that you can add that into the baseline form and also be able to draw a comparison. So we will look at an example that will be able to do this um, down um, uh, later on in the, in the presentation. So uh, what do you need to keep in mind when you are um, considering a preloaded data option? One of the, actually the one main thing to think about is the tool that you will use for data collection because it, the options that we will go through are going to be, uh, you will see that some work on both Enketo and ODK Collect, which are our main uh, data collection tools, but then there are some that are only work on ODK Collect. So as we go through each one of them, I will, I will mention the ones that are uh, like the compatibility for each one of them and which tool um, that the, the tool that you can work with uh, when you use any of those methods. So um, we'll start off with just looking at a very simple form, like a form that has not used a preloaded data. So just as a um, as a starting point. So um, the first thing I will show you is the a survey worksheet. So we have a survey worksheet for this form, the choices worksheet and the settings worksheet. Then here we only have uh, four columns. We have the type, name and label, uh, and then the choice fields are column. So here I'm concentrating with only, I'm only using um, uh, the location information where we have three administrative level. Um, so we have province, county and sub-county and all the lists for, um, for those for uh, these administrative levels are coming from the choices sheet. So um, if you have very long ones, so this is what I was trying to say, like when you have very long location lists, then uh, it would be better for you to use um, the preloaded option uh, to make it easier for you to load um, data to your form. Great, so um, now this shows you the choices sheet that has uh, the list name, the name and the label. And then the, the CF column there is a column that relates um, each level, that, um, that um, the, um, one level to the previous level. Like for example, when you look at the county on the CF column, we have, uh, you can tell that Nyandarua is related to the central province. So these are, are provinces, counties and sub counties in Kenya. So um, notice that uh, I'm able to relate uh, counties with the respective provinces in the same way I am able to, um, to, um, to show you that uh, these sub-counties belong to um, these counties. So the CF column is uh, 
it's a it's a user defined column in terms of that you're the one who decides the name so this the, you're the one who will decide what to call it so i call it cf in short for choice filter and you will see that i will use that across uh, all the examples that we're going to look at so now let's go um right into um uh, looking at the first option which is external select now, um, external selects are a bit of an edge case. And the reason they're an edge case is because um, whenever you are implement the external selects, you do not require a CSV file. You're not going to have an external CSV file that you work on. Again, you're also not going to be pulling this from, from another form. So this uh, goes outside of our definition a little bit. So that's why we, we said that it's an edge case. But with um, external selects, what happens is you do need to create an extra um, sheet. So for the base form that I've shown you, we only had um, survey choices and um, settings. But now we will add another worksheet, which is called um, external select. Yeah. So we will add that file and then all the choices that we are going to, we're going to, um, we need to reference will go into that particular um, worksheet, okay? So something to note whenever you are using the external select is that one, it is uh, only compatible with ODK Collect, so you cannot use it uh, on Enketo, when, when the form needs to collect data on Enketo. Um, you also can only use it for select one questions. It cannot be used for select multiple questions. Um, you also need to uh, keep in mind that this one is only used for cascading lists. So um, you cannot use it for lists that, that do not have that cascading dependency. So it can only be used for cascading uh, lists. That's why it's most common for location information. So when you do create that file, that, um, that worksheet, um, it creates it creates automatically a CSV file that is called itemsets.csv, uh, which is added to the settings of your form. Um, and maybe one last thing before I now go to our example is that uh, on the choices sheet, um, the sorry on the external select sheet, um, the list name has to have the underscore. Um, normally, when you're doing your, your um, form authoring on the normal choices sheet, you can have list name as list space name or list underscore name. But within the external select worksheet, it has to be list underscore name. Otherwise, it will not work. So um, let me move to now show you, we'll begin with the survey worksheet, and then we will move to the choices worksheet and also to the external choices worksheet. Um, so the I'm continuing with the same um, um, example where we have um, three administrative level. So we have province, county, and sub-county. Um, my first level is the province. So since province is the first level, that list needs to be available on both the choices worksheet and also the external choices worksheet, yeah? So if that is not added, or like if you do not add that um, province, like in this case, province or the first list on the hierarchy to both of them, then the form will give you an error when you're uploading it into owner. So that's something that's mandatory. You need to make sure that the list, which is first on the hierarchy, is added to both the choices and also the external choices worksheet. So that's why in this case, for select uh, for the province, the type hasn't changed. It remains select underscore one because I'm, I'm pulling that list from the normal choices uh, worksheet. But for the county and sub-county, the question type changes to select one external, meaning that for these two, we are definitely pulling uh, the lists from the um, external choices um, worksheet. Um, and then within the choice filter, we would do it the, the same way you would if you were referencing, if you had cascading lists on the um, choice, on the choices worksheet, where you basically say, uh, look at this, um, the choice filter column. In my case, I've called it CF. Look at the CF column and only populate counties that um, match the province that has been selected. So that doesn't change when it comes to uh, external select. So that's the survey sheet. Then we'll look at the uh, choice sheet. So like I said, um, the first list on in the hierarchy will need to be in both the choices sheet and also the external choices. So this is the list we have. 
So I've added it here. And again, within the, um, the choices, the external choices sheet, I have added it in there as well. And it's good for you to add it here because you will need to create that entire cascading um, effect to make sure that um, county, the counties that load will depend on the province that is selected and the sub counties that load will depend on the county that is selected, okay? So once you have done all that, uh, now, like I mentioned, that the uh, item uh, set.csv file is created automatically, so you don't need to do this. And when you're down, when you uh, when it gets to you downloading that file, uh, the form into ODK Collect, it will be downloaded as an as, a, as an extra file. Like you, it'll be as if you you'd uploaded it as a CSV file. Cool. So that is it with external select. Now I will move to. Um, select one or multiple from file. So this is another, another method that we're looking at. And as the name suggests, when it comes to select uh, this particular method, it supports both select one and select multiple fields. So you can use it uh, to pull um, a list from a form or from a CSV file to, to load a, a select one or a select multiple field. Um, this is also supported on both ODK Collect and Enketo, so it works on both tools. Um, and then something to note, whenever you are creating a CSV that is to be used with the select, uh, with this option, select one from file or select multiple from file, there are two mandatory columns that you need to have, and that is the name and the label. So it's almost as if you're creating the choices worksheet, but without the list name column. And you will see why that is not needed. So that's something that you definitely need to keep in mind. And also that um, uh, the, what, whichever files you use when you are, um, whatever files you reference, all of them, whatever CSV files you're referencing or pulling lists from, lists from will need to be uploaded to the forms, to the uh, settings of the form under the form media section. So that when, when you're downloading them either into OD Collect or when you open the form in Enketo, it can reference those CSV files. Um, and also another role is to make sure that the file names that you have referenced within the XLS form match the files that um, the files that are uploaded to the to the um, settings of the XLS form. Otherwise, it will not work. Um, I would also recommend that you uh, upload one CSV file for each field. So if like in my situation where I have um, uh, three administrative levels, I would have three different CSV files, so one for the province, another one for the county, and another one for the sub-county. Uh, something to also note with this particular method is that it does not support multiple languages. So only use this if you do not want, if you are, if, the, if your form does not require um, to use multiple languages. So let's go into an example. And the first thing we are going to see is the CSV files that, um, the CSV files that um, have I have created. So the first CSV file is for counties. Uh, notice that we have the name and we have the label. So I did not create one for the province because we only have three provinces. So I maintained the list, um, the province list within the choices, um, the, cho the choices sheet of the form. So um, we have the counties uh, CSV file that has name label and the CF column, which now relates uh, the counties with their respective provinces. And then we have the sub county uh, CSV file. This one also has name and label, yeah, which is the AB, AB columns. And then the C column relates these counties, I mean, these sub counties to their respective counties. Then lastly, I added on one extra um, CSV file. So this one we are going to use to pull select multiple from file. So it's basically a list of cities and you will see in the next slide where it's going to apply. Uh, so for this one, it does not require the CF column because it's an independent question that is not going to, to be cascading. So I will move, now that we've seen the CSV files, I will move to the survey sheet. So the survey sheet in this case has one, has um, the province, county, sub-county and world cities uh, question. So like I mentioned, the first list is coming from the choices, um, the choices sheet. So I didn't, I don't need, it doesn't need to change. So it remains select one province, but for the county sub county, um, because these ones are pulling data from um, different um, CSV files. So it changes to select one from file. And now instead of referencing the list name, it's 
as you would normally do. Now that that's where you, you reference the name of the file. So you need to make sure that the name that you reference here is the same um, is the same name that will be uh, is the same file name that will be uploaded into into the settings of the form. So so in that case we have counties.csv and then we have select one from file subcounties.csv. Then lastly we have that question that asks um, which cities somebody has visited and then we want them to be able to select multiple options. So that changes now to select multiple from file and then provides the world cities of CSV as a file that will be pulling data. So notice that the choice filter for county and sub-county again does not change. It remains the same uh, in terms of um, the same convention that we've used so far in terms of um, choice filter. So that does not change. Uh, basically, it will work the same way because we have the, the this CF column that I'm referencing is available on both the counties and the sub-county um, CSV files. Okay. Then lastly, on, on um, this option, I will show you, uh, these are basically the files that have been uploaded into, um, into the owner form, uh, making sure that then the, the names match what has been referenced within the XLS form. Great. So um, now I will move to the search function. All right. So the next one we're looking at is the search function. So the search function is only compatible with um, ODK Collect, so it can only work on ODK Collect. Um, and with this one, um, different from the previous option we have just seen, the, the 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 column names can be custom. So you can be the one deciding what names to give it. Yeah. So and you will see this with a CSV file that I have created. And then uh, the file names of uh, the files, of course, whatever file you're using, whether it's one file or multiple files, they will need to be uploaded into the settings of the form. Um, and then with this particular option, it uses the appearance um, column. So the, with the other options, we've been using the uh, choice filter option, but with this one, we're going to use the appearance, uh, the appearance column. So let's move into an example. Um, so the first thing I will show you is the CSV file. So the CSV file, notice that now the column uh, names are very specific, like they're these are basically custom files. I'm not using the name and the label, um, just the name and the label as I did uh, previously with the other option. So um, you are the one to determine what name to give the columns, uh, as long as you make sure that you reference the correct columns when you come to designing the form. So I will, I'll go into now the survey sheet to show you how that would look. Um, so we have, again, it's also the same administrative levels. We have province, county, and sub-county. Um, and then for the first, um, the first item, which is province, yeah? Um, let me see. I think let's start with the type column. So notice that the type column um, remains uh, standard in that we are using select one list name. So basically select one province, select one county, select one sub-county. So there is no change within the type column. And then the name and the label uh, follow the, the, the normal convention. But then now we've created an appearance column, which is where we're going to use a search function. So for the first hierarchy, for the first, um, for the first item on the hierarchy, which is province, because it does not require, it, does not, it does not have dependencies. So it's not depending on another list in order to be loaded. All we need to do is use one parameter for the search function. So we have, search and then location yeah so location is the file that we are that we are referencing okay um so it will only need that one parameter and not more than that then we move to now county and sub county so when it comes to county and sub county the search function is expanded a bit in order to allow us to um achieve the cascading effect okay so i will explain what the the different parameters mean and how you would basically read it. So we've expanded the search um, um, a function to now have four parameters. The first parameter is the file name. So the file that you're going to upload into the settings of the work of the um, XLS form. Then the third parameter is um, 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 a column that exists within the location, the, the locations file. So it's a column that exists within the file that you're going to upload into the form. And then the last parameter, so sorry, I've jumped to the second one. I will explain that in a bit. So the fourth parameter 
is a field that exists within your form. So notice that we are referencing it using the dollar sign open and close curly brackets. So in that case, now reading this out so that now I can include the second parameter, we're basically saying um, the system should check the locations file and, um, and specifically look at the province name column and check for a province that matches the province that has been selected and then load counties that the counties that fall under that particular province. And the same thing for the sub county. We're basically saying the system should check the locations file, specifically the county name column, and look for counties, uh, look for a county that matches the county that has been selected, and then populate a list of sub counties that fall under that particular county. So that's how you would basically read that. Now let's go into now the, um, the, the, the traces sheet. Uh, so this one uses the traces sheet and you will notice that there's a bit of a difference here in terms of how we are referencing the name and the label. The list name column remains the same. So just going back to the previous, um, the previous slide, because we've not made any changes to the type column. So we're referencing the list names as we would normally. So province, county, and sub-county, those ones remain the same under the list name column. But then within the name and the label, what we're doing here is we are referencing columns within the locations file that will populate the respective um, lists. So for instance, if we want to populate the province, we, we've said that we want to reference the province underscore name column for the, the name, and then we are referencing the province underscore label for the label. So let me go back up to the, to the uh, file that we looked at. So notice that column B and C represent uh, the province underscore name and the province underscore label. So you do need to make sure that you reference the correct um, columns and as much as the, you are the one who names them, um, uh, whatever, whatever you would like, it's best for you to make sure that you have referenced the correct fields. One of the ways I like to do that is I do a lot of copying and pasting instead of typing them out afresh, because copying and pasting allows you to maintain the same, um, the same name without having to change anything. It's easy for you to mistype it if you're trying to type it out again, yeah? So going back to now the choices worksheet again. So yeah, so, and that applies the same thing to the county and the sub-county. So we're saying for the county, pull the list from the county underscore name column. So that's for, um, to get the, the ID or the name variable for the name, uh, yeah, the choice name for that particular uh, list. And then uh, to get the label, go to the county label, okay? Uh, great, uh, then, then the last thing is just to show you the file that has been uploaded, uh, which is we only need one file because we're only referencing, referencing that one file, which is our locations file. Okay, then um, the last thing uh, in terms of like looking at the options, the last option we're looking at is the pool data function. Um, now the pool data function um, is compatible with both ODK Collect and Enketo. And uh, with the pool data function, um, you can only use it if you want to pull information from one field. So it, it's not used when you want to pull information from a list. Yeah, so only from one field. If you want to pull uh, information from multiple fields, you will need to use multiple um, uh, pull data functions. And I, I will show you an example of this where I've used multiple uh, pull data fields. Um, something else you also need to keep in mind is that um, it uses the calculation column. So all the other ones, like, yeah, this one uses the calculation column, okay? And then um, it has, uh, four parameters. It uses four parameters. The first parameter is the file name. So the first parameter is a file name that you're referencing. So whether it's a CSV file or a form that you have previously collected data on. The second parameter is a field within the file that you are you have referenced. That you um, so that's basically the field where you're going to be pulling data from. So the second parameter is the field where you're going to be getting data from, and that field is within the file name. The third parameter is a unique identifier that is within the same file, yeah, and is with, that is within the same file that you are going to upload into the XLS form. The last parameter is 
a field within your XLS form that we will use to compare between, um, that we will compare with the unique identifier in the file so that we are able to pull um, the information that you want. So a unique identifier in this case could be like a household ID or um, a phone number, anything that can be used to uniquely identify your um, whatever you, you're collecting, your item of data collection, yeah? So if it's a household, what's the household ID that can be used to uniquely identify that particular household? Um, if it's a maybe a person ID or a phone number or a national ID card, anything that would uniquely uh, identify your item of data collection, okay? Um, so for now, are we going to keep it simple? And then later on, when we go into another example, I'm going to show you uh, what we would do if the fields are in a group and how we would expand that to fit that particular use case. So let's go into um, an example. So I'll go into an example right now. Um, the first thing I'm showing you is a CSV file that I have I have used. So it has um, a household ID as the first uh, column. It has the head of the household name and then uh, other columns of data that 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 was collected. Yeah. And so we are going to be pulling some data from this particular CSV file. So I'll go into showing you the we'll start we'll, we'll just use a survey sheet. So with the pull data function, you're not going into the you're not going into the choices sheet or or any other sheet. You're primarily just staying on the uh, on the survey sheet. So let's begin with um, uh, what we're seeing here right now. So we have um, the first uh, the first um, field, which is row three is the household uh, household ID. So remember I mentioned that you do need to have a unique identifier whenever you're using the poll data function. Um, so we have the household ID, which will be entered by the numerator as they're collecting data, yeah? And then what we want to do, we want to pull the head of the household so that we can confirm if the, where the enumerator, so that the enumerator can confirm where they have gone if that's the correct household. So they will read out the name of the person and say, is head of this household so-and-so. And if that's the person, then they'll know that they are in the correct household. So in order for us to achieve this, we have um, this field, which is the head of the household ID field, sorry, the, the household ID field. And then we have a calculate field that has been added um, in order to use the full data. So the poll data. So with the calculate field, you do need to have a calculation column. So the calculate uh, question type goes hand in hand with a calculation column. So those ones have to be created at the same time. Then now going to, I'm gonna go to column E of row four. Yeah, and then just read this out for you. So what we're basically saying here is we're going to look into the household data file and then look at the house head of the household name column and then we'll check the id the household id that has been entered and if there's one that matches if there's a household id that matches the one we've entered within the household data uh, we will pull the name of that particular person so that's why you need a unique identifier because if there are more than two houses that have the same household id then you will find that it will basically pick any random one. So it, it will probably not pick the one you want. So it will just pick any random, any random one. Yeah. Especially if you, if you don't have a unique identifier. Okay. And because uh, the poll data works with a calculate field, which is not um, displayed out in the open, if you want to display the uh, the output of a calculate field, you can either do that using a note or you can use the label of a question. So in our case, we've used the label of a question to, to display the name of the, uh, of the head of the household. So which is here. So row six is where we're displaying the name of the head of the household. But then we've also used the pool data for other, um, to pull other information. So previously, there's a primary water source that was uh, entered. So we want to see what was the previous um, primary water source that the household had. In this case, we're basically referencing the same household data file, checking the primary uh, water source column, then matching, looking at the household ID that has been entered. And we will only give the primary water source for when these two match, when they're the same thing, then we'll be able to get a value or an output for uh, the primary water source. And the same thing applies to the water treatment method, okay? Um, 
so now this is just an example um, of the form uh, that has been created where you've entered um, the household ID. And then for this particular question, we're able to show is the head of this household, Rachel Pender, because that, that name corresponds, that is the name that has been found um, under that particular um, household, okay? Then, of course, like with all the other options, you do need to make sure that you upload your file um, into the settings of the, of the form. So um, the, before we go into questions, what I wanna do is I want to show you that we can, some of these options can be combined together. Some of these methods can be combined within the same form, depending on what you would like to achieve. So for our example today, I am using the household water access and treatment use case. And then we have two forms. We have a needs assessment form and a baseline assessment form. So within the needs assessment uh, form, um, data was collected and then each household was assigned a unique identifier. So the household ID, which is unique for each and every household. Then for the baseline assessment, the same households were visited to find out where they're at based on the previous data collection, okay? Something else we're also going to do uh, when we're building out this form is we will do a concatenation of province, county, and sub-county. So I'm maintaining the same three uh, tier hierarchy for the uh, location. So you have province, county, and sub-county. So we're going to concatenate this using um, underscores, and then we'll use that as our choice filter, as our, yeah, as our choice filter to be able to pull household IDs uh, that have been interviewed. And I will show you that practically in just a little bit. Um, then whenever household ID is selected, based on that household ID, we will be able to pull the name of the head of the household and pull other specific responses that we would like to compare or like we would like to have within the baseline form for later uh, comparison when we're doing analysis. Then the good thing with, these, with this option uh, is that because both um, um, select one from file, which is a, a, an option we're going to use, and pull data um, are compatible with ODK, collect, and enketo. That means both forms, that is the needs assessment and the baseline forms are going to work on, on both um, tools. So let me go into the, the example. So we have, the first thing we have is a needs assessment form. Um, it has um, province, county, and sub-county information collected. And then we have the household ID, which is our unique identifier. Then at the bottom here, I have added three uh, calculate fields. So these are fields that will not be displayed on the form during data collection, but you will be able to see them in the back end when you go into um, owner. Like when you go into the table view or the data view, you'll be able to see those columns. Because we are using the select one from file option, uh, and I mentioned that it does need to have the name and the label um, columns. We are basically creating that here using our uh, row 22 and, and 23. So name and label, yeah? So now let me take you through this. So what I've done uh, for 21, I've created this column, um, this row, which will become a column uh, that I'm calling CF, where I concatenate the province, county, and sub-county uh, using underscores. And you will see where I'm going to use this in the baseline. Then for the name and the label columns, I basically reference the household ID in both instances. Um, so now I'll show you now the data that has been collected on that on the um, on the um, needs assessment form. So we have province, county, and sub county, and the household ID plus the name of the uh, of the head of the household. Then I'm showing you now the extra columns, which is CF name and label. So notice that um, basically the CF concatenates. Uh, Coast, Mombasa, and Nyali, and the rest. So that, and I will show you where we're going to use this just right in the next slide. So this is how the data looks. Um, and then now we'll go into the baseline form. So within the baseline form, we will start again with the province, county, and sub-county, because these are relevant for the data that we're collecting. And then before moving forward, I need to create the same um, concatenation as I did in the needs assessment. So what I'll do, I, I decided to give it the same name, so CF, because it's in different forms. So CF, and then within the calculation column, I concatenate province, county, and sub-county. So whatever selection has been made here, I concatenate that, okay? Then for row seven, this is where we're going to use now our select one from file. So, and we're using the select one from file to populate household IDs. 
All right. So we have select one from file under the type column. And then within it, uh, when we're referencing the file name, so the file we need to reference is the needs assessment. So I decided to give it just to maintain the same name uh, because it's a lot easier. But when I'm, and when I'm uploading the file into honor, I'll make sure that the name matches um, exactly to this. So needs assessment.csv. Then when we go all the way to the choice filter, um, uh, the choice filter um, uh, column, so remember we have CF in my, in, in my, now this becomes like my CSV or my file. So we have, C, uh, we have a CF in my file. So I'm basically saying the CF within that file should match when it matches the CF here. So basically what I'm saying is the concatenation that I did in the needs assessment, when that matches with the concatenation I have done in the baseline assessment, pull all the household IDs that fall under that particular, um, that match that particular criteria, okay? So it could be one household ID or multiple household IDs. So once they are pulled into uh, this, this um, um, select one uh, field, uh, then I, you select one household ID, yeah? If it's just the only one, then you choose that, just that one. Then the next thing we do is now to, we wanna pull the, the name of the head of the household. So uh, we have a pool data function here, but then we've, now we've expanded it because uh, the fields that we're going to reference are in a group. So we need to expand it to make sure that we give the pool data the correct path. So the first parameter does not change, still remains the file name. And in this case, it's a needs assessment file. The second parameter does not change. It's just been expanded a little bit. So we're saying we want to reference the head of the household name, but the head of the household name in the needs assessment belongs to the informed consent uh, group. So what we do is we do informed consent dot head of a household name dot or period. So that's how we create that path. And the same thing for the household ID. The household ID in the needs assessment belongs to the informed consent um, group. And therefore, we need to make sure that we give the pool data the correct path. Okay, so the rest is going to work the same way. So reading this out, we're basically saying that the form, the system should look at the should give us the head of the household name within the needs assessment uh, file, when the household ID that is um, selected matches with one that exists within the needs assessment form. And again, we are also able to pull multiple fields using the pool data. Um, so all of these are being pulled from the needs assessment. Uh, and now these ones belong to the household water field uh, group. And therefore, um, that's how we've given the, that's why we've given the path as household water period primary water source. So this is to show you what we said about um, Whenever, if you want to do, um, if you want to pull more field um, data from multiple fields using the pool data, you do have to create multiple um, calculate fields. So lastly, on this example, I'm just going to show you a form. Now, the baseline form where we have selected um, province, county, and sub-county. So it basically creates this um, CF or this concatenation. And then this concatenation for now only pulls one household ID, which is this one. And then when we select that household ID, it's able to give us the name of the head of the household, which is Robert Cabele. Okay. Then, um, yeah, I think, yes. So that's it in terms of all the, uh, the different choices, the, the different options that we can use for, um, for preloaded data. Um, before we go, I open the floor for uh, questions. I'm going to look at uh, some questions that were asked prior to, um, before we started the, before the session. So I'm just gonna go through these two questions and then we can go into a Q and A session. Um, so the first question that was asked is, after completing your XLS form, is there a way to test before uploading? So uh, for this question, unfortunately, there is no way to test your form before you actually you upload it into Honor. You will need to upload it into Honor in order to test it. Now, when you upload it into Honor, there are different ways that you could test the form. It depends on what you want to achieve. So um, one of the ways you could uh, test your data is um, using, we have a preview URL that you can access and be able to test your form without necessarily submitting any data to the form. 
And then we have an offline URL where you that you can use to um, where you will actually submit data and can look at it in the data view or the table view to see how data would look. So to access uh, either the preview URL or the offline URL, once you have uploaded your form into Honor, select the title of the form so that you can go into the overview of the form. And then you will see that we have a submit data um, section at uh, the bottom right of the of the page um, then what you need to do is just click on web form links and then you will see um, uh, a file a, a window sorry that will open up with these options you will have the preview url you also have the uh, the offline url um, then on to the second question so um, i'll read it out normally we use the pool data function in xls forms to get to get the preloaded data is it possible to upload the csv files before the form is uploaded so I will say this first before I give a response. I would recommend that you um, complete the um, XLS form exercise and then upload the forms into, uh, sorry, upload the files, the CSV files into the form. That's, I would say that's like the easiest way of going, of going about it. But if you do really have to upload the CSV files before uh, uploading the form, you, we have a, a feature that is called upload a data set. So you could use that option. And what this does is it uploads uh, the, a data set and, and, um, and the data set is going to be available the same way you would see a list of forms under your project. So you do need to upload it to a project. So you can upload the data as a, um, the CSV file as, um, as, as a data set. And then later on, once you have completed uh, doing your Excel, XLS form authoring, um, you would need to, actually, when you're doing XLS form authoring, you need to make sure that you reference the correct columns. Then afterwards, when you have uploaded your CSV file, you will need to go into the settings of the form and use the select data set to link option to make sure that now the CSVs, that files that you uploaded, are um, tagged or linked to the form, to the XLS form. Um, and you, lastly on this, you need to ensure that the file name that you have referenced within the form matches the one that you indicate uh, when you're linking the form, okay? Um, so that's it in terms of the questions that were asked before. So I'll open the floor for other questions. Um, Bill, I think I, I see Mahmoudou's hand raised, so I guess you can give him the opportunity to talk. Oh yeah, sure, go ahead. Thank you, first of all, thank you colleagues for the excellent webinar. Uh, just one question from my side that, is it uh, the uploaded data can be dynamic? Like if I keep the, uh, the preloaded data in, in Google Drive or somewhere else and can be updated automatically into the preloaded uh, data set. Okay. okay, thank you, Mamadil, for your question. Um, so in when it, when it's a CSV file, uh, it's it's going unfortunately in that case it's going to be a static file. So it um, it cannot be dynamic in that you can um, keep adding data to it, like in terms, yeah. What you would have to do is if you do have data somewhere else, like in a, in a Google sheet where, um, where you are uploading data, you might need to keep replacing the file. The only time that uh, the data becomes dynamic is if you are actually using a form within Honor. So you have two forms. So form one and form two are both collecting data within Honor. So, and then form one has, live data collection ongoing, but then form two is pulling data from form one. So in that case, the data would be dynamic because uh, new data, like data is incoming, yeah? Um, yeah, so unfortunately, if it's like a, a, a CSV file that is uploaded to um, the settings of the form, it would, it would, be, it would be a dynamic, um, it would, sorry, it would be a static um, file. Thank you. All right. 
Any other questions? Uh, please feel free to to raise your hand um, if you have a question. All right, so uh, the floor is still open to ask questions. So we'll, we'll give it maybe one more minute. All right. Okay, so as we come to a close, um, if you do um, have questions later on and you would uh, like to ask, um, oh yeah, so there's a question that's come in, sorry, yeah. Um, so can you use, Pull, can you use data coming for another active form in the same project to pull data? Yes, yes, Marka, that is that is possible. Um, yeah, so that is that is definitely possible. Uh, you can use uh, a form that has live data. So I'll go back to my example of having, say, let me let me say, for example, you have a form one, form A, and you have form B. Uh, so what would happen is you have form A that has ongoing data collection. And then you have form B that needs to pull data from form A. So um, there are two different dynamics depending on the data collection tool that you're using. If you are uh, using um, 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 Enketo uh, for form B, yeah? So form A and form B are going to be linked and they're going to be linked in the settings of form B because form B is the one that's going to be pulling data from form A. So what would happen is if you're using Enketo, anytime you open form B, you will be requested to refresh whenever new data comes in, yeah? So you will notice that um, it'll say uh, the form either, I can't remember it verbatim, but it says something to the line of uh, the, the, the form, there's a new update, there's a new version of the form, please refresh uh, to get um, the, the, the latest version. So it's a lot easier when you're when you're uh, dealing with live data, when you're referencing live data, um, when you the tool for data collection is Enketo. Uh, if you're using ODK Collect, then what that means is um, your enumerators or data collectors will need to have the latest copy of the list every day they go out for data collection. So for instance, if both form A and form B have data collection ongoing at the same time, Whenever um, they, in the morning, whenever the team is going out for data collection for form B, they would need to download a ver like to update the version of um, form B that they have within ODK Collect to ensure that they have pulled the latest um, data from form A. Yeah, so that's the only difference between. Um, so the dynamic comes in the tool that you will use for data collection. But to answer your question, yes, it is possible to pull data from a, a, a form that's live. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I hope I've answered your question well, Marka.
All right. So um, what I was saying is if you do come across any questions that you have later on, uh, please feel free to reach out um, and uh, we're going to be able to respond to your questions. You can email us on support at honor.io or reach out reach us um, on Skype. Uh, we will also share the material that we have referenced in this um, webinar. So we're going to share links to the folder that has all the forms and the CSV files that we've used in the webinar. Um, and also other resources that you can um, that you can access. Okay, so if there aren't any other questions, uh, since we're coming to the top of the hour, uh, thank you so much for joining our webinar. Um, thank you so much for participating, for registering. We really appreciate uh, you joining. Um, yeah, so thank you so much. Uh, those who are celebrating Easter, we wish you a um, lovely Easter holiday. Uh, those who are um, still going on with Ramadan, um, we wish you a happy Ramadan. That's it for today.